The title of our paper is Generalizing Zeckendorf's Theorem to F Decompositions. If we write the Fibonacci numbers as 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on, then Zeckendorf's theorem states that all natural numbers can uniquely be written as the sum of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers. We can write 2014, as an example, as 1597 plus 377 plus 34 plus 5 plus 1, which is the sum of non-consecutive Fibonacci numbers. And the way we did that was to simply at each step take the biggest Fibonacci number that we could without going over the sum 2014. And the number in red displays how much we have left to use, or the current remainder. Here's another example of a larger Fibonacci decomposition. This result extends to non-negative recurrence relations of the following form, and where non-negative means that all the coefficients are non-negative, and these constants L, C1, and Cl are positive. Now for the Zeckendorf decomposition, we had a rule which was that no two terms could be consecutive in our decomposition. And the rule for a general recurrence relation of this form is more or less that you shouldn't be able to use the relation to simplify the way you've written down the decomposition. And if you use this rule, then every natural number has a unique legal decomposition. If we, instead of starting from a sequence and figuring out what's a useful rule, we start from the notion of a rule and ask, what's a sequence that lets us uniquely decompose every natural number? Then we can get some pretty interesting results. So for example, if we start from the rule that no consecutive terms from our sequence are allowed, which is the Zeckendorf condition, then let's see what sequence we could possibly have that would give every natural number a unique legal decomposition. So if we want to be able to represent 1 as a sum of terms from our sequence, and we start with nothing in our sequence, then 1 should be an element of our sequence. Similarly, if we want to represent 2 uniquely as a sum of terms from our sequence, and all we have is 1, then we have no choice but to add 2 into our sequence. As for 3, we can write 3 as 2 plus 1, but 2 and 1 are consecutive, and we said that that's not a legal decomposition. So we have to add 3 into our sequence if we want 3 to have a natural, excuse me, if we want 3 to have a legal decomposition. 4, on the other hand, can be written as 3 plus 1, which is two non-consecutive terms for our sequence. So that is a legal decomposition, and 4 does not need to be added to our sequence. 4 already has a unique legal decomposition. 5 can be written as 3 plus 2, but 3 and 2 are consecutive, so we need to add 5 into our sequence. And so we keep doing this process, and at each step, you know, we add a number if it can't be written as a sum of non-consecutive terms from our sequence. And if we keep doing this, then the sequence that we get is the Fibonacci numbers. And so, in fact, we have that the Fibonacci numbers are defined by the property that every natural number can be decomposed as a sum of Fibonacci numbers that are non-consecutive. To generalize this sort of idea, we introduce the notion of an F decomposition to talk about excuse me, to encode the notion of a legal decomposition. And here's the definition. If f is a number from the naturals with 0 to the naturals with 0, then a sum x equals sum from i equals 0 to k of a sub n sub i, of terms of the sequence a sub n, is called an f decomposition of x using the sequence a sub n, if for every term in our decomposition, a sub n i, the previous f of n i terms are not in the sum. So here's one example of using this terminology. Uh, the Zeckendorf decomposition, which we've already discussed, which is that consecutive terms in our sequence cannot be chosen. Using the notation of f decompositions, this is equivalent to saying that our function f is the constant function 1. f of n equals 1 for all natural numbers n. And what this means is that if we pick any term in the Fibonacci numbers, and if that term is in our decomposition, then we're not allowed to use the single term before it, the one term before it. That means that no consecutive terms can be chosen. So that's how we represent the Zeckendorf decomposition using an F decomposition. Here's another example. If we partition our sequence into bins containing four terms in this example, and we say that our rule is that at most one number from each bin can be chosen in decomposition, then what F means in terms of this sequence is that F of n equals n mod 4. Because if we look at the zeroth term and we pick the zeroth term, we don't have any restrictions on the terms before it that we can pick. There are no terms before it. If we pick the first, if we pick the term with index 1, then we're not allowed to pick the term with index 0 because it's in the same bin. If we pick the term with index 2, we can't pick the terms with index 0 or 1 because they're in the same bin. Uh, if we pick the term with index 5, we have no restrictions because it's the first term in its bin. So we see that f of n equals n mod 4 in this case. And if we construct our sequence a sub n using the process that we use to construct the Fibonacci numbers, then we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, 75, 100. And this kind of looks like base B representation because if you notice that we're only allowed to pick one number from each bin, at most one number from each bin in our decomposition, then we have sort of a one-to-one -one, uh, one -one correspondence between these decompositions and the base 5 representation of numbers. So we can see that F decompositions are a generalization of both the Zeckendorf decomposition and base B decomposition. The main results of our paper are as follows. First, for any F from the naturals with zero to the naturals with zero, there exists a unique increasing sequence of natural numbers A sub n such that every positive integer has a unique F decomposition using A sub n. The way we prove this is similar to how we constructed the Fibonacci numbers. Our second theorem is that if our given f is periodic, then the corresponding a sub n from the theorem above actually satisfies a linear recurrence relation. Finally, for the rest of our paper, for certain classes of f decompositions, we studied the number of summons in the f decomposition of a randomly chosen integer in a growing interval, and we found that the number of summons approaches a normal distribution. Thank you for your time.